Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will introduce the 3D printing process via photopolymerization method. So there are uh, numerous commercially available 3D printing systems uh, based on the uh, photopolymerization. And uh, basically in this kind of process, the liquid photopolymer is cured or hardened when the light source is exposed with certain appropriate uh, wavelengths. So um, the purpose of this module of the lecture is to provide a overview of the systems of, of which are available, uh, including the 3D systems ones um, and also the form labs ones we used you know, in the lab. Uh, and, uh, and some other uh, new advancement uh, of the photopolymerization based uh, 3D printing process. Um, uh, another purpose of this uh, module is to learn about the theory uh, behind the light re uh, horizon and interaction and also uh, understand how you could manipulate the process parameters that you could control uh, the printing uh, using the photopolymerization process. So there are two basic approaches under the umbrella of photopolymerization. One is the vector scan based ones. Um, so as you can see um, on the right hand side, uh, basically the light source uh, is uh, re re reflected and um, guided to scan certain pattern and along the pattern the liquid material is cured to form a layer so that's the uh, scanning based um, photopolymerization uh, process another uh, big family is the uh, projected image based ones so instead of uh, um, using the laser beam to uh, cure the um, patterns, uh, cure the I mean the liquid, uh, a black and white image is projected, and the black region means there's new no curing, and white region means there is a curing. So using the uh, projected image each of the layer will be cured simultaneously. So the first process uh, of the photopolymerization is the stereolithography. Basically, this method is uh, developed, invented by 3D systems. An ultraviolet uh, curable liquid polymer is selectively uh, scanned from the above with a laser beam having the correct wavelengths to cure the material. So let's look at the video. As you can see here, uh, the laser beam is guided to scan a certain pattern to cure one layer of the, uh, uh, the object. And after uh, the, uh, the layer is cured, uh, the build platform is lowered into the vat and a uniform layer of new liquid rhizin is spread on the top. So this process will be repeated until the part is done. So if you look at this uh, video, um, can you imagine what are the fundamental process parameters you could control that would affect the part quality? I will give you one to two minutes to think about it. Okay, let's look at it. Um, actually, the uh, essential parameter you could control is the uh, size of the laser spot. And uh, basically, it will affect the 
uh, feature size, this uh, process could uh, prevent uh, during the printing process. Actually, there are some uh, SLA systems have dual spot size. One is a broader spot. Another one is a smaller one. So why they have the two uh, different um, uh, spot size of the laser? That is because uh, the broader spot cure the larger area quickly, and a smaller one will cure the fine features, which is slower but gives uh, more accurate features. So that's why they have the two different feature. Uh, I mean, a spot size, and by alternating the two, they could achieve a better combination of the efficiency and accuracy. Um, another thing is the uh, once the part uh, are completed, um, there will be uncured resin on it. So how would you clean it? I think you you guys have known the uh, the answer because you have uh, uh, went through the you have gone through the uh, uh, lab sessions with the form lab machines. So basically, um, you need to use the uh, isopropyl alcohol to wash away those uncured resins uh, at the end of uh, the printing, right? <coughs> Sorry. Um, also, there are other pro uh, post processing for the SLA process. Uh, first of all, you need to remove the support. Uh, even for the simple shape we uh, printed during the lab, uh, the hook, I mean the Rook model, um, you need to, there are some support material. You need to remove it uh, and then clean it, right? Uh, after that, you, you, you all, usually you want to have a post securing. Uh, using the ultraviolet or thermal methods to uh, further harden uh, the uh, part. Um, but after that, you could have a, a smoother surface uh, using a sandpaper or other tools to just uh, remove some of these leftovers. Like, uh, for example, if you have the support material and uh, you even you remove it, there will be some uh, some uh, features left over. Uh, you want to use the sandpaper to remove it or other tools. Uh, also, you could decorate the model uh, uh, by uh, priming, painting, or plating it. So these are all the post-processing for the SLA process. Um, actually, um, <coughs> sorry, during the lab, uh, we use the form lab machines uh, it is different, a little different from the uh, stereolithography we saw in the uh, previous video, uh, because uh, in, uh, for the form labs, it is uh, the so-called inverted stereolithography. So the part is built upside down instead of uh, uh, from uh, uh, the top to the bottom. Um, so the vat is lower into the resin tray leaving a thin gap of liquid resin between the platform of the, uh, of the uh, transparent bottom of the, va uh, the vat. Uh, laser scanned up through uh, the clean bottom of the, of the vat, um, platform raised up to allow the new resin to flow in, and then it lower back down for the next layers. And uh, the bottom of the vat is coated with the material which will not um, be easily sticked to uh, the resins. So they use the PDMS materials. It's like a Teflon-like uh, uh, material. And if we look at this video, actually, I think you have, you've already done, you've already seen it uh, in, the, in the lab sessions. So that is how the form lab have the prints. So as you can see, um, the printing is is uh, done through a upside down way. All right, I might spy, uh, I might skip it. Um. So, <clears throat> sorry. So for the inverted stero uh, stereolithography, um, there are many 
different features compared to the original stereolithography. So first of all, the laser source is different. For the 3D system machines, um, they use the industrial grade lasers. But for the form labs, they utilize a very low cost blue ray laser uh, dyes, uh, which will greatly reduce the cost for the machine. Uh, make it affordable to uh, those consumer level uh, product, uh, I mean market. Also, the laser orientation is different, obviously. For the 3D system ones, the laser projected from the top down, but the form lab one, the laser project from the bottom up through a window. So you can see the two, uh, uh, the illustrations over here. So you, that's the uh, difference between uh, uh, the uh, original stereolithography and also the form lab ones, the invert ones. Um, um, another uh, feature which are different for the two is the size of the part. Usually the 3D system ones uh, could build much larger part. But why um, why the form lab ones are restricted to print smaller parts? Um, that is because there's a separation force. So basically during the printing, there will be a separation force between the just printed layer uh, versus the bottom of, uh, of the tank. So if there is no separation uh, force um, applied there, then the part will be sticked to the bottom of the tank. So there requires a separation force. And uh, as, we, we, uh, as we know, the large contact area, the large part will require a large separation force. So if the part is too large, uh, this separation could damage the part or even make the whole printing failed. So that's why um, the form lab printer usually can only uh, print a smaller size part. Um, another point is the resin usage. Um, is there any difference in the amount of the resin needed for the two uh, different processes? Um, if you check the uh, the two illustrations, you might notice that actually for the 3D system ones, uh, it requires uh, uh, to fill the whole, the full uh, vat. But for the form lab ones, form lab ones, uh, it only requires a small amount, as long as the material is enough for printing the part. That's it. That that's enough for the form lab ones. But for the 3D system ones, it always requires a full vat of the material. Um, another big difference between the two is the price. Uh, as I mentioned, the 3D system ones usually uh, cost more than $100,000 per set. But for the form lab ones, it's around $3,500, so which is much cheaper than um, the 3D system ones. Um, if we look at the, this kind of vector scan uh, based method, let's think about uh, what are the factors uh, for the building uh, time. Um, as you can see here, we know some of the uh, information here. First is the uh, laser scan speed. Um, basically, this uh, Vs uh, represents the scanning speed. Uh, the unit is millimeter per second. And uh, another information is this WT uh, represents the width of the uh, cure trace. Uh, basically for each of the scan, <coughs> scanned trees, sorry, there's a width. Uh, another uh, parameter here is the layer thickness, uh, which is represented by LT. And with with all with this information, you could uh, immediately uh, give some idea that uh, the rate for uh, the I mean the uh, volume rate of the scanning uh, of the scan. Um, 
also there's a total uh, total air uh, a volumes of of the material for the whole part uh, also there's another criteria i mean uh, information is the part uh, part height which is h so basically with this you could tell for each of a layer uh, how how much uh, material will be needed and uh, use this you could uh, you could immediately compute um, uh, how, how much time it requires for the laser to scan each of the layer another time you might ignore is there is a time to spread the resin between each of the layer and we denote it to be ts so this is also a necessary uh, time to take account and uh, with all the information you could derive out uh, what is the time to build any given part um, so besides the uh, vector scan based uh, method there's a, a projected image based stereoisography and uh, the representative uh, company is the emission tag. So the uh, for this kind of process, um, first it is quite similar to the inverted stereoisography. Basically, it, it builds the part upside down, and uh, but instead using a, la a laser scanning, it uses a digital light uh, processing projector to project uh, a three a two D image to cure each of the layers. And uh, let's look at the video and see how it does the job. See, still uh, built uh, upside down. And uh, you can see uh, the pattern of, uh, I mean, the 2D image is projected and the cure each of the layer. And also, you might notice there's a, a 2D motion over here for the platform. So what does this motion use for? Basically, that is for a sub, uh, uh, for providing a shear force to separate the just the newly printed layer with uh, the bottom of the tank. So that's a necessary step for this kind of uh, uh, projected uh, image-based stereoisography. And that is time consuming because you have this uh, separation process. And uh, I will introduce another uh, method called CLIP, which overcomes uh, this um, separation issues. And uh, another thing is, um, what are the benefits to have uh, uh, this kind of uh, Mm, a projection based uh, method. Uh, if you look at this video, compare it with the uh, either um, stereo, uh, I mean, the original stereolithography by 3D system or the form labs, you might notice the building time is substantially reduced because um, it cure uh, the whole entire uh, layer by one projection of the 2D image. Instead of the uh, laser scanning uh, those lines for curing a layer. And uh, that's the biggest benefit for uh, using the projected image-based stereoisography. Um, also, there are other processes uh, which does not require the VAT. Uh, you can look at this 3D system pro uh, project uh, 1500 model. So in this uh, machine, basically a thin layer of resin uh, is spread on a clean uh, plastic film. And it does not require the resin uh, vat. And then uh, an image is projected to cure the resin um, and then the platform is lifted away from the film. Uh, once the index film forwarded, uh, this process will be repeated. And let's look at how it works.
see uh, the platform is lifted away and the new layer of material is spread out. Of course, it will wait a little bit for the excess material to uh, drop down and then it, it goes down and the, it's cured by the projected image and then this process will be repeated again. All right. So as I mentioned, there is a new process which is uh, called CLIP or Continuous Liquid Interface uh, Production, uh, which uh, speed up the process a lot because it does not require this separation. Uh, let's see how it works. Here's how Carbon's technology works to print and use parts. Light from a custom high-performance LED light engine projects a sequence of UV images exposing a cross-section of the part, causing the UV curable resin to partially cure in a precisely controlled way. Oxygen passes through the oxygen permeable window, creating a thin liquid interface of uncured resin between the window and the printing part, known as the dead zone. The dead zone is only a third of a human hair thick. However, it is the area responsible for Carbon's remarkable high-performance resolution and unique isotropic parts. In the dead zone, oxygen prohibits light from curing the resin situated closest to the window, thereby allowing for the continuous flow of liquid beneath the part. Just above the dead zone, the UV light projected upwards causes a cascade-like partial curing of the part. Simply printing with Carbon's hardware alone does not allow for end-use properties with real-world application. Once the light has shaped the part, a second programmable curing process achieves the desired mechanical properties by baking the part in a thermal bath or oven. Programmed thermal curing sets the mechanical properties by triggering a secondary chemical reaction, causing the material to strengthen, achieving the desired final properties. Okay. So if we take a zoom view of how uh, and what uh, about what it happens uh, near the uh, bottom, you can see uh, how the liquid flows uh, in the printing area. Uh, so basically, uh, from let me use a laser from here to here, uh, that's the uh, part being printed. And uh, you can see uh, from the two sides, the material, the liquid material flow in the bottom region. And uh, you could, we could see the visualized flow because they put the tracer in the liquid uh, resin, uh, which allow us to see how the flow move. Um, as you can see, this is the so-called dead zone. That means within this area, there's no uh, material to be actually cured and uh, when, when the uh, part is being printed and lifted up uh, the liquid material keep on flowing in to the bottom so by looking at this can you uh, think about what will be the fundamental limitation of this process by uh, checking its working principle here okay let me uh, give you some idea. So again, this one is limited to a small size part. Why? Because when the part is large, this area will become large as well. And it will take too long time for the liquid flow to fill this region when the part is being printed and lifted. So that's the fundamental limitation of this process. It can only produce relatively small, smaller part. So the key difference between the clip and the form lab ones. For the form lab ones, uh, there is a adhesion force uh, of the part sticking to the uh, platform, and this uh, adhesion force should be large enough and exceed exceed the separation force of the part separating from the uh, clear vat uh, during the lift off. Otherwise, uh, the printing will be damaged, uh, I mean, will be filled. 
um, for the uh, clip because there's an oxygen permeable window maintains a liquid gap uh, at all the time. So there's no uh, lift off and lower back down uh, operation needed. So uh, in other words, there's no way, no uh, need to separate uh, the just printed layer uh, with this uh, bottom of the tank. Uh, so because uh, the reduction of this step, uh, the printing speed is much faster, uh, but still is limited to the smaller uh, parts as, as we mentioned in the previous slides. Um, if we look at the build time for the projected image based uh, stereolithography, what information do you need to estimate the build time uh, with this process? Because um, in this time, uh, there is no laser scanning anymore. Instead, the whole image will be projected at one time to cure the layer. So in other words, uh, the, it's simpler to estimate the build time. Um, basically, what you need to do is how many layers you are building. Um, it's kind of proportional to proportionally uh, increased if the layer number increased. Um, here shows this uh, uh, slide shows a new application of the stereolithography based method that is to print the composite material. Uh, specifically in this one, uh, there's a ceramic field material. Uh, so basically what people do is they combine the ceramic material with the uh, polymers and the polymer will serve as the binder and uh, basically and then uh, they pr print the part just uh, as euro as the uh, normal uh, st st uh, uh, photopolymerization based 3d printing method does and then after that they do a debinding basically they burn out the polymer uh, uh, material from the printed part and then do a centering process to further solidify the printed shape. So that's how they could produce this uh, ceramic material with the photopolymerization based method. Uh, another details about the process is this uh, laser governor meters. Uh, basically, uh, this uh, governor meter, govern, uh, governor meters uh, consists of two uh, mirrors. So these two mirrors uh, are located, uh, can be rotated uh, along two different axes. One we call it X axis, another one is the Y axis. And uh, each of the um, each of the mirror could be tilted by rotating it, and uh, by Combining the different uh, tilting of the two mirrors, you could control uh, the projected laser to be uh, uh, to be used to cure certain point on a 2D plane. So that's how uh, we control the laser scanning during the uh, stereolithography, laser, uh, vec laser vector based. So let's look at the how secret it are works. galvanometers. Now these are two mirrors, and each one of them is mounted to a galvanometer. A galvanometer is kind of like a very precise motor. There's a coil of wire and a magnet. When you put in a signal, it uh, moves left or right. You can't go in a complete circle like a motor can. It's locked in position. These are general scanning galvanometers. And you shine a laser so it hits one of the mirrors, bounces off that mirror, and hits a second mirror. One controls horizontal, the other controls vertical. All right. So, um, so in that sense, this kind of uh, high-speed laser scanning could be possibly applied to 3D printer. Actually, this video shows a, um, a laser scanning, uh, basically galvanometers uh, used for the 2D uh, laser printer.
but definitely it could be adapted to the 3D printing. Similar, uh, similar uh, 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 working principles as we see in the previous slides. Okay, I just skipped this. Another uh, very interesting uh, component uh, in the um, in the optical part of the uh, stereolithography based method is the F theta machine uh, theta uh, lenses. So during the printing, um, th there's a problems uh, that is if you have a uh, let's say you have a let me uh, use a pen. Uh, let's say you have this mirror to reflect uh, the laser beam uh, to cure uh, the resin uh, on this plane. But they use a lens to uh, focus uh, the laser beam to print at, at one point, uh, 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 to, to cure at one point. But as you can see, um, all the laser beam after this uh, passing, I mean passing through this la uh, lens will focus along this curved surface instead of this 2D plane. So which will lead a uh, defocus here. That means uh, this light uh, after its foc focal point, it will again diversify and cure the material on this 2D plane. Uh, but it cure the larger area than it's supposed to be. Because of uh, this lens can only focus the laser beam and form a curved surface instead of 2D plane. So this uh, f theta lenses overcome the problem. As you can see here, it, have, it has uh, different lenses and uh, it turns out it will make sure uh, if we if we check this figure. Uh, basically, the laser beam after the reflection will be focused right on this 2D plane instead of on a uh, curved surface like this, uh, such that uh, it, may, it ensures uh, when the cure happens on this 2D plane, um, all the laser is on the focus instead of uh, diversified. So that's the function of the F theta lenses. Um, so another you know, very important component for the digital light uh, uh, projection based method is this digital light projection uh, component. So it is um, developed by the Texas instrument. Uh, so basically, it's a uh, arrays of micro mirrors, and uh, this these mirrors uh, could control its visibility, and it could be tilted to certain angles. So when the light is projected onto these mirrors, by uh, controlling the visibility, also change the tilted angle, it will generate uh, an image on a two D plane such that it has black and white, also the different darkness. And by controlling this, you could control uh, the curing happens on that 2D plane. So another uh, very, very interesting details about the DLP based method is um, the resolution and the image size. So for uh, each of the uh, projector we use, you could see it has a uh, focused, uh, I mean fixed uh, pixel uh, resolution. Means how many uh, image pixel this could uh, generate using the projector. But uh, for the projector, if the uh, projected plane is close to uh, the projector, uh, the image will be smaller. If it goes further to the project, projected plane, uh, this projected area will be larger. And given the pixel number is fixed, that means uh, the actual distance between each of the pixel will be 
uh, different uh, when the projector is located a different distance uh, to uh, the project plan projection plan and that will give you a idea about the uh, printed 3d printed feature size uh, of course you have to know this uh, this uh, projection angle as well here shows a two angle because uh, it's a 3d uh, it's a 3d uh, uh, projection means on 2d plan it has an angle and uh, I mean along the x-axis it has an angle and along the y-axis it has another angle and uh, use this you could tell the smallest feature of the 3d printing using this kind of DLP based method and I will leave, uh, leave this for you to derive how to compute and also I will post uh, an answer uh, in, next, uh, in next class Another very important thing is this uh, mm, uh, wavelengths. For different material, there's a different uh, requirement for the wavelengths, which would cure that material. And if if you mismatch the material and the light uh, the light with uh, a, a certain wavelength, uh, you could end up have the material cannot be uh, cured properly. So you have to check uh, this requirement for the different material and you could go to this website I won't open it here but you can go to the website and check uh, the requirement out there and uh, and also uh, you could check the uh, different types of the lasers and the different lasers will have all different parameters um, but uh, the most essential one will be the wavelengths and that will uh, 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 will uh, make you uh, make decisions when you have certain material to be cured. Also, there are tons of uh, material property information if you check the, the 3D system website, uh, and it gives you all the uh, requirements like uh, the mechanical and also the material properties. Um, and chemical properties, and uh, you need to uh, choose one uh, choose a material according to the requirement of your applications. Um, so there are some discussions about the uh, uh, stereolithography methods, especially the materials. So what what kind of material property will lead to a higher accuracy? Um, actually, when we talk about the um, fuse deposition modeling, we always mention the thermal uh, shrinkage, right? That is the main resource, I mean, main sources for um, the shape distortion. Uh, similarly, for this uh, SLA materials, we check the curing shrinkage. So that is the uh, material shrinkage uh, during the, this curing. The less shrinkage it has, the higher accuracy with this will lead. Um, another uh, question is: think think about the applications that would require the high temperature resistance. Uh, there are some applications like any parts just uh, uh, under the hood of, of the car, right? Uh, basically, there will be high temperature inside there, or some parts, some object used in the in, in the kitchen. For example, the, the plastic handle of, of, of uh, the pot, right? That will need uh, the ability to bear a high temperature. Also, some applications would require the optical clarity, like you pr print some lenses, right? That definitely require the optical clarity. Um, for the last uh, uh, question, the high stiffness. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the uh, the object printed using the stereolithography tends to be more flexible, but there are some cases which requires a high stiffness. For example, the living hinges. Uh, in some of these um, um, contact lens covers, uh, when you open it up, there are, there are some living hinge made of plastic over there. For such kind of part, it definitely requires a higher a stiffness 
right? You could name a few just uh, along these lines. 